My friends, welcome back once again to our course on emotional wellness. I'm excited for this journey. I hope you're having a good experience. I hope that as you're journaling different ideas, writing down different thoughts and impressions, that you're finding more and more joy in your life. Remember, this process is a process. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But little by little, with these little tips and techniques and these doctrines that we're learning, I promise that you're going to have happiness. You're going to be able to feel happiness more deeply in your life, and you'll be more of a joy and a light to others around you. I implore you to uh, to keep going, keep trying, and little by little, uh, small changes will bring to pass that which is great. Today, I want to talk to you about emotions. This class is called you know, Emotional Wellness, <laughs> and so it will be only fitting that we talk about emotions and feelings. So I remember our big picture here, we, we have this paradigm that we're using of belief windows where you and I, we look through a window, and on that window we have different beliefs, and that kind of governs our interpretation of the world. And you know this, that two people can look out the same window, so to speak, and see the world very differently. And that's true of us from our emotional state as we've experienced different things in our lives, uh, undergone different traumas, different trials, different setbacks, you name it. <clears throat> we see the world differently. The same is true if we've had a pretty good life, if we've had uh, joyous moments, a good family, you know, reared in the gospel, whatever, uh, maybe pain free even. We see the world very differently because of the beliefs on our belief windows. Remember, circumstances are facts. They're just simply a series of events. Beliefs are how we interpret those circumstances. And tied to that are going to be feelings and emotions. Remember, feelings and emotions are created by beliefs and thoughts. They're not created by the actual circumstances. Remember, all experiences must be processed through your brain before you experience any emotional response. So some ideas. Now, <laughs> some of us, as we go onto social media, we see different pictures of friends, uh, maybe gospel centered pictures of, you know, family prayer, family scripture study, dating, uh, you name it. And it looks like just the most idyllic life. And you know this, but let me remind you that those uh, pictures are the highlight reel. Um, when I played water polo in high school, I was good. I had really good success. Uh, I was All-American in, in water polo and All-State in volleyball. Both those sports came very naturally. Uh, as part of the recruiting process for colleges, they wanted to see some highlight films. So I would take film footage and I would pick out my best moments and send them off. I looked like a phenomenal player when all she saw was my highlights. The whole game footage, though, looked a little bit sloppier. And the same is true as we look at different people. Please remember that we're only seeing the highlights. What's happening with a lot of our young people today is they see those highlights and they begin to think, well, what's wrong with me? Or I'm not allowed to feel anything other than joy and happiness. Today's class, we're going to spend some time on the importance of feelings. Remember, it is part of our mortal experience to have emotions. Heavenly Father wanted us to have a body, and one of the, as I've read different statements by our prophets and apostles, one of the primary reasons for having a mortal body is so that we could experience emotions on a very different and deeper level than we could with just our spirit body. So part of our mortal experience is having these deep emotions because of the physical body. Let me remind you of a few examples scripturally of different people that allowed themselves to feel. Uh, Moroni was very upset with Pehorn and Pehorn with Moroni. They had this exchange in Alma 60 to 62, back and forth with letters. They were emotional and it was good. It's okay to feel emotions. Uh, we look at Jeremiah in the Old Testament. It looked like at one point he was, I mean, obviously severely depressed. There's some indications he might have even been suicidal at one point. He allowed himself to feel deeply as he was looking at the pains of life and his circumstances. Another example in the Book of Mormon, we have all these stories of people that feel the spirit deeply, and the typical Book of Mormon response is they pass out, they fall out in the spirit. Uh, and that is okay. It's part of our moral experience to have emotions. Emotions are a good and wonderful thing. Remember uh, Ammon, as he is rejoicing over the converts, his brother Aaron says, hey, easy. This is taking away into bragging and boasting. And he says, well, who can glory too much in the Lord? He was on a high, and that was okay. It is wonderful and within bounds to feel emotions. Jesus, right, as he was uh, seeing the money changers at the temple, he felt some emotions. He allowed himself to feel those emotions as he cleaned out the, the money changers. In fact, later when Lazarus dies, Jesus allowed 
allowed himself to feel deeply the pain and loss, uh, not just of Lazarus, but watching the reaction of Mary and Martha and the others surrounding that sepulcher. In other words, remember, it is part of our mortal experience to have emotions. And it's critical that we allow those to happen. Now, here's some tips. When you have feelings or emotions, you have uh, four different options. You can resist them, right? Try to reject those feelings, or you can react to those emotions. Oh, and people that do that, it becomes a little bit ugly. Or you can distract yourself from an emotion. You know, people do that uh, long amount of times on, on TV, on cell phones, social media. Um, they, they go and, you know, travel and it's just life is an event. And they go, 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 go because they're trying to distract themselves from their true feelings or emotions. The fourth option we have, though, is to simply actually feel the emotion. And I would submit that that is the healthiest way to go, to actually feel the emotion. Here are some ideas on how to do that. First of all, allow it to be there. If you are feeling sadness, oh, be sad. If you're upset, allow yourself to be upset. If you're feeling joy and excitement, oh, allow it to be there. Whatever the emotion, allow it to be there. One tip that I learned uh, from one of my therapists is even to sometimes set a time. You know, I'm going to be sad for the next half an hour. And let yourself feel all the emotions of sadness and pain and regret and loss. But when that buzzer goes off, mentally, you'll realize, you know what? Okay, I need to, uh, I need to move on. I need to uh, find a different emotion. And it's okay to go back the next day or that afternoon or a week later and allow yourself to feel those feelings again. There's no limit on how often we can feel those feelings. One tip, if a feeling is pervasive, if it just won't go away, if you can't get over it, can't get past it. One tip that I've loved is to describe it in detail. The idea being, as you feel sadness, describe how, how does your mind feel? How does your heart feel? How is your breathing? How does your body react to that feeling of sadness? As you describe the feelings you're having, you are number one, allowing yourself to feel the feeling. But second, you're processing yourself, experiencing the feeling. And it's a wonderful, wonderful journey. What happens um, with me and, and those that I've taught this principle to, is that there's a natural calming effect. Again, this is a tip for those feelings that won't go away, um, that, that persist and are pervasive, and those that, that cause us not to be able to function as normal adults. If we can describe it in detail, one of the podcasts I listened to, she described it as um, you have to describe your, your feeling as if you're talking to a Martian who is completely foreign to what it's like to, to feel feelings. And as you go through kind of a more uh, clinical or, or cognitive approach to your feelings, your body has a natural response. It just simply calms down. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. It really helps you separate yourself from your emotion. You become a, a compassionate observer of what, uh, what you're feeling. It's a great way to calm yourself down and to be able to collect your, your thoughts and your emotions and put them under uh, a little more control. By and large, brothers and sisters, let me testify one more time. It's part of our mortal experience to have emotions. It's important that you feel things. If you don't, here's, uh, here's what happens. Why should you feel your feelings? Well, picture a volcano. Um, picture a volcano erupting. <laughs> You see, as we let those feelings uh, well up inside of us, if we resist or reject or distract ourselves from our feelings, they build up. And then all of a sudden, one time you're at dinner and your friend scrapes their plate with their fork and you lose it and you go off on them and you look silly and you <laughs> become embarrassed later on looking back at it. You see, as you address the emotions little by little and allow yourself to experience them deeply oh, and let them go deep, you're able to process them. And that way, little things like the fork on the plate don't seem to bother you quite as much. You're able to function as a human and respond to emotions rather than react to them. Here's my challenge to you today. I want you to, as you have different uh, emotions, to think about what you're feeling. 
describe from a physiological standpoint what you're feeling. What is it like? Uh, does your taste differ? What does your heart rate do? What is your breathing doing? Does your body feel anything from your head to your toe? Literally, are you feeling anything? Uh, describe it. Use words. As you describe your sadness, your fear, your worry, your anxiety, your depression. Describe it almost clinically like you would to a Martian. And watch the physiological response that your body has. It's a wonderful, wonderful exercise. But through it all, let me remind you one more time. It is part of our mortal experience to feel feelings. It's okay to feel things. And I would invite you, allow yourself to feel them for a time. And little by little, you'll be able to manage your emotions and have a wonderful and balanced life. That's our tip for today. And I share that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.